If you're looking to fund the comic book hobby or completely just get out altogether because you think the comic market is crashing, I am giving away my step-by-step -step process and free tips on what I believe is the most efficient way to selling comics online. Welcome to the Paper Chase channel. You are about to get flooded with useful information and tips. I believe this way and method of selling will get your books in front of the most eyes for the lowest fee and have the highest sale conversion rate that you can get from online comic book sales. The only thing I ask for you to do in return from all this free information is to hit the like button and to leave a comment down below to help push this stream out to the rest of the comic book masses. You're going to see a lot of important tips and side tips in between the steps I'm going to give you and even if you're experienced you still can probably get some great useful information from this video today so let's dive in important tip number one your pre-sale tactics and your setup for your sale is probably the most important thing uh, in regards to being efficient and moving smoothly and reducing the amount of mistakes that can be made during the sales process the setup determines how smooth this will go so our intro, what type of comic book sales are we talking about online? We're talking about post-claim sales. What this means is you make a post with a sale and a price and somebody claims that they want it in the comment section below. Now, why do I feel that this is the best way? Number one is it is the least amount of fees that you will pay for selling your comic books online. PayPal good and services fees, I want to say is something like two or three percent compared to other platforms like eBay and whatnot where their fees range typically from 10 to some platforms up to 15% sales fee. So the money that you're going to save in fees alone by doing it this way is astounding really. The other reason why this form of selling is more beneficial is because depending on your following and if you don't have that many followers, this is going to give your books a chance to get way more eyes on them than if you were to just do an eBay post where the market is completely flooded or some sort of live sale or things like that. Claim post gets a lot of eyes on your books. A very important tip is if you're talking about where to post these books. Let's say if it's on Instagram, but you don't really have a huge following on Instagram. Well, Facebook actually has comic book groups that already have members that are dedicated to buying comic book sales just like the ones that we're talking about here. And you can take all of the steps you're learning today and put them into these Facebook groups. So that is the type of sale that we're talking about here and why I believe it's the most cost efficient. Let's dive into the steps. Step number one, Choose the types of books you're going to sell. I find that for sales like this, typically books that range from around the $8 up to about max $200 are the price category of books that are going to sell the best in this form. We're talking about quick, affordable key issues. Now your one to five dollar books doesn't mean you have to completely exclude them in sales like this, but if you are going to include books that are one to five dollars, it might be best to group those books into lots and sell them as lots on your letter that you're going to put up for sale. So for instance, if you're going to do letter B, you might have five books at two dollars a piece, ten dollars for the stack, and maybe it's all Spider-Man or maybe it's a limited series issues one through five or one through four. They'll move much quicker that way. All right, so now that you've chosen the type of books that we're going to sell here, this is the worst and least fun part, pricing and grading. Um, I can't really tell you how to grade on this uh, video here. This is not really meant for that purpose. But when it comes to pricing books, I can tell you that for pricing comics, I typically go to eBay sold and then I will discount whatever the most recent sale price is in that rough condition. So for example, here you've got uh, an amazing Spider-Man issue number 256. This is the first appearance of Puma when I was pricing this. I want to say that eBay sold for a VF copy. It was somewhere around the $27, $28 range. I just made it 20 bucks. Quick tip when it comes to marking and pricing your books, these tags here I got from Office Depot. I will put a link to them on the screen and in the description below, but these are nice glossy removable tags so these right here uh, whoever buys your book can actually remove this and still salvage the bag and board that you're selling it in uh, it takes to permanent marker very well dries extremely quickly and uh, does not smear over time and then also they're great if you do want to keep the books that you're not going to sell on your post 
sale and you can put them right into a short box, take them to your next Comic Con and they're great for just price tags when you're selling at other events. So you know the books you're gonna sell, you've got them priced and graded. The next step before your sale is marketing. I think a lot of people forget to do this and how important it is to market your sale before you start posting. Let people out there know the day, the time, the type of books that you're going to be posting and have them get ready. Uh, I'm going to throw up a couple of examples of different flyers that I have created in the past that I let people on Instagram know, hey, I'm about to post a sale, get ready, hit the bell notification, always a useful tip. And all of these flyers here are created on one of the most valuable apps for me as a comic book seller uh, and content creator is called Canva. Canva, you can create really anything media-wise, uh, flyers, business cards, t-shirts, YouTube thumbnails. I make everything on this app called Canva, and I also make the flyers that I post onto Instagram and the sales posts all from Canva. Not to say it can't be done without it. You can definitely do this without using Canva, but this makes it a little more professional looking and makes a few things run a little bit more smoothly. Now, when it comes to marketing your posts, definitely the time is key. So what I've found in the past that when you're going to do claim post, the best time to do it is really on the weekends, uh, starting on like a Friday through a Sunday, and maybe you can ship on Monday or Tuesday, whenever you have time or your schedule allows you to. So step number four in this is create your verbiage. Your verbiage is basically, first of all, your notes section in your cell phone is going to be one of the most effective and useful tools for selling comic books online. Uh, you're gonna have multiple things in your notes section that you're just going to be able to copy and paste and implement it into how you're selling your books. And this is the first one. The information about your sale and how you run your sale. And you put that below the pictures of the comics that you're posting. So for me, I'm gonna show you an example on the screen of what my verbiage looks like for all of my sales, and it's the same time every single time I have a sale. All I have to do once I created it is copy, paste it into an Instagram or Facebook, and then that's it. So you can see here I have my rules, I have my shipping fees. And as you can see in the bottom, one of the most useful things that I have already predetermined into my notes are the hashtags. We all know that the algorithm uses hashtags to decide who's going to be seeing these books. So I have certain hashtags I've already typed out that are just for comic book claim sales. And those hashtags, instead of typing them every single time I post a book, it's already created. There's 20 or 30 hashtags that automatically pops up. Super easy. So those are all the most important preliminary things that we do before we start selling. And then now comes the photographing. Now I've seen people do this a couple of different ways. Part of your supplies and things you're going to need when photographing your comic books, you're going to need one, a clear work area, two, a flat surface, three, good lighting, four, a reliable phone or camera stand where you can just have your phone in one position. You're going to be loading books, taking a photo onto the next on to the next, on to the next. What I do is I do 15 rounds of post. Every single post has letters A through P, so that's 16 comic books. Now, as far as the letters set up and how it works is I got these little cards with the uh, alphabet stickers on them, and I can basically lay down on my table A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then after I snap that photo, I flip all of them over, and they have the next round ready to go on the back. Now, this whole process, this physical activity of setting up your comics, setting up your letter cards, taking your photo, and resetting, this is something that you need to... I would do the first time and figure out a way you're going to do it the same time every time because if you can master the method on how you do this, you're going to get really quick at it. And if you're posting three, four hundred books, uh, you know, your efficiency when doing this is going to be very handy and save you a lot of time and effort. However, a huge important tip when doing this, this is something you do not want to experience. I've done it before in the past is make sure your photo 
takes. So you set the books up A through G or whatever it is, and you go to your photo or your phone and you hit the click photo button, you know, make sure that photograph takes because I've gone back in the past and I realized the photo either wasn't clear or I thought I hit the button and it didn't fully take a photo. Then you have to go back and set everything up all over again. Make sure the photograph is taken before you move on to the next photo. Now, another important tip is after you take your photos, you're going to put them into your own short boxes that's dedicated to just these sales. So if you're doing 300 books that you're trying to sell or whatever, you want to have probably about two short boxes. And after you take the photos, you put them into these boxes. After you're done photographing all of these comics, the next thing that you should do is go over to that box and alphabetize every single book. It's going to save you hours. If the books are already alphabetized, you're going to be able to pull books for people in an instant and it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Alphabetize your books. Another great important tip is do not post your books in alphabetical order. You want to have, for marketing purposes, you want to have your books chaotic as f You don't want people to be able to guess what they're going to see next. By making the post sporadic and random, this is going to keep traffic coming to your page and coming to your post, which will then kick the algorithm to push your post to more people. No order. All of the order takes place after you've posted all the photographs and they're in the box. All right, so step number six, you've taken the photo. Now this is what I do. I take that photo and I create the post that's actually gonna go on an Instagram and I put that into Canva. You can also do some slight editing on your phone if you really want to. So if the photo is not clear and the maybe the condition or the price is not clear, you can go into your phone and edit the contrast a little bit or the brightness so they can be a little more legible. Uh, you don't wanna get too carried away with this because you don't want to... Uh, put like a false advertisement filter on your photos. You know, you want your photos to appear how they pretty much appear in real life. So on mine, I put nice bright green letters, you know, swipe to the right for more photos. I put a nice sales sign, uh, things that really grab the eye if somebody is scrolling through their phone or through their computer. Now the whole swipe to the right for more photos, that's really just based off of my way of doing it on Instagram. On Facebook, you don't really need that because of how their layout is. All right, step number seven is post your books. Time to post them up, put them out there for the world to see. And this is kind of where it gets a little fun and exciting because you're sitting there and kind of waiting to see how much money you're going to make, which is great. Uh, and this could be for money. Like I said, this could be to fund the hobby. I mean, let's say you have a book that costs $2,000 and you're just counting down the pennies until you hit that mark. Well, now's the time to start counting. And uh, this can get pretty exciting. The best thing though, when you're doing this, so you do your post tip number one for while you're posting, uh, do not post everything at once. What I do is I post, if I do 15 rounds over three days, I'm posting five rounds on day one. And each one of those rounds, I post about one and a half hours in between. So I'll post one, hour and a half hour later, I'll post round two, round three, and so on. Multiple benefits for doing it this way. This allows people to uh, come across the round and realize that you're doing post sales. Maybe hit the notification bell for alerts. Number two, the algorithm, and probably the most importantly thing, the algorithm really doesn't reward unloading all of your photos at once. The algorithm is more favorable towards one post, hour later, another post, and it's just how it works. It's what I found to, to work the best. Another major tip for while you're posting your comics is be present. Do not go anywhere. Like, try not to go anywhere or, or you know, for the first at least few hours of while you're posting. Because uh, what's going to happen is, you know, people are going to have questions about, hey, can I get some additional photos? Or people are going to send you offers on books and things like that. So you really need to be tentative to the app that you're posting on and be there to answer questions. And most importantly, step number eight take notes. You need to keep track of your sales here. Um, this is so easy and minimal. As you're checking, let's say Instagram, somebody claimed book B round two. Well, then I go to my notes and I have a notes titled claimers. And it says, you know, uh, comic collector XYZ claimed round two letter B. And if they give you an offer and you accept that offer, put that offer in your notes. So round two letter B, $40 you know, and then save that and just update it as people are claiming books. So you post all your books, you're done with that. 
Now you're kind of letting it linger. You're about to get your invoices and things together, which we'll get into in the next step. But the great thing about this way of selling is even when you're done posting, I've had people claim books that were two days after the entire sale ends. If you just leave all of your sales up for people to see, eventually people will stumble across them and you're going to get some residual sales after you've already done. So the next step is thank yous and invoices. This is something I created over a year ago that just stays in my notes. And all I do is I copy that and I paste that into the message section for the buyer. And all I do is update their price and their total with shipping. I'm going to put it on the screen that you can see what I write, but it says thank you, some additional rules for shipping and uh, payments and things like that. And every single person that buys a book, they get this message and they also get a copy of the list I created in my notes. Again, the notes is so important. You're going to just do a lot of copy and pasting. Not, you're not doing a lot of typing. Copy and paste. Next step, step 10 is package and ship. I typically try to ship books out two or three days after the sale has ended. But one of the biggest downfalls about uh, doing this is chasing down people for money. You know, it's easy as far as the copy and paste goes, but for people to actually pay what they said they're going to pay for, you know, you really have to kind of stay on top of them and keep track who's paid for what. And what I typically do is I'll take a post-it note with that buyer's name on it. I'll create a stack of books for them. Once their books are paid for, I typically turn that stack over or, or do something to indicate that, hey, this person is paid up and we're ready to ship for this person. So collect your invoices, collect your money. If you do PayPal goods and services, um, it is uh, more professional, but there is a bit of a fee with that. If you tell people to do friends and family, uh, there is no really insurance on that. There, Some people don't feel comfortable dealing with friends and family, and there is no fee for you in that sense. So cost-wise, you get paid the most if you do friends and family. I do goods and services just because it's a little more professional that way. And then our final step is uh, after everything is packaged and sent out, just send out your tracking numbers. So what I do is I take photos of every single label and I just go to that person's username, direct message, send them a photo of their package with the tracking number on it and they can track it as they please. They can see transparency. Hey, these books are ready to go out. Uh, and as always, package these books with care and, you know, like you give a crap and like if they were your books. Um, always, always good because nothing can kill your business more than crappy packaging. So that was all the steps and tips that I have for selling comic books in the form of claim sale post on Instagram or Facebook. I can do another one of these for maybe uh, eBay, though I feel like that's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. I hope you guys found this information useful. I hope you use it to maximize uh, your funding of the hobby, to get the grails that you've always wanted, or to just make a lot of money. Comment below any tips or things that maybe I have missed or maybe that you can improve on on what I've said here today. And uh, let's have some good sales talk in the comment section below. As always, your time here watching this today was greatly appreciated. Uh, hit the like if you appreciate the information I'm giving you here today. Share it if you can. And uh, we'll see you on the next page.